beautiful night at Little Sable Lighthouse. I'm out here testing a new lens, at least a new lens to me. It is the Irix 15mm 2.4 lens. Sorry if you're having trouble hearing me. It is fairly windy here at the lighthouse. And my plan tonight is the Milky Way is going to be at a great position at about 2.30 to 3 a.m. It's currently about 8.30 and it's actually night two right now. The first night we had an epic Northern Lights show that was a total surprise to everyone. So we got a ton of meteors and a ton of Northern Lights, which was awesome. And I got some really funny shots to show you guys. But I'm gonna get started kind of critiquing this lens because I did use it a little bit last night and unfortunately I was very underwhelmed. But I'm gonna see if I can tinker with it Get it to where I like it because right now, from testing it last night, my Rokinon 14mm 2.8 autofocus, the about $550 version, is miles sharper. So that's probably what I'm going to end up going with again tonight if I can't get the other one uh, to kind of lock in with that sharpness. So let's get to trying. Well, guess what? I actually found out something very interesting and I'm glad I did this. So I decided to turn on my tracker, and I'm very glad I did, because I found out something very interesting. So while doing the tracking, even though it's so windy, I was able to get some great two-minute shots. The Rokinon 2.8 uh, performs awesome at 2.8. Uh, so I do that for a lot of single exposure. So it's great for Aurora, it's great for single shot Milky Way, blah, blah, blah. The Irix 15 that I've been testing is garbage. The stars are absolute crap. You stop it down to f4, they are good. They are just as good as the Rokinon at 2.8. Why would I use an f4 when I can use a 2.8? Here's the thing. When I got the tracker out, 2 minute f4, comparing the two, the Irix 15 is way better. Or I should say the edges in the corner are way better than my Rokinon 14. And that's because I think the right side of my Rokinon lens, the very edge, is very distorted on the stars. And I'll show you that here. Okay, welcome to part two of the video. And I'm gonna show you in Lightroom the comparisons between the 15 millimeter, the 14 millimeter Rokinon. And it took me quite a long time to find the exact settings that I needed for my 14 millimeter Sigma. So let's get right to it. So we have up in the histogram, it is the 14 millimeter 2.8 at 20 seconds. And because this is uh, the night of the meteor shower, I know that this 14 millimeter is my uh, Rokinon. So I just have some basic edits done and I'm gonna go all the way down here because one of the things I was gonna show you is the vignetting. So this little tab right here, the enable profile correction, this is going to show you the vignetting. So this is the box you check in order to get rid of that. So you're going to check that, uncheck it, I guess I should say it was already checked. So now you can see all the darkness around the sides and the corners and you can see just how bad that vignetting is. But with a click of this, it will fix it. Vignetting is artistic, obviously. Uh, you might want to put that back in so you can always use the slider but this isn't really an editing tutorial what i really wanted to show you guys about this particular lens is this center sharpness it's very very good obviously you can see there's some noise here um i actually removed some of the noise so this is the original amount of noise as you can see settings were 6400 so usually i just slap on 50 uh, percent noise reduction but uh, you can see how everything is very nice and sharp right here in the center. If you go to the left side, same thing. You can see some stretch in the stars, which is all normal for 14 millimeters. And if I go all the way up to the top corner, the stretch is there, but it's really not that bad. So, but here's the catch. Remember I was saying that my lens, I think is decentered. Look at this side. Look how bad that is. That's really bad and it's it's in every shot is like this and it it's it's all this side right here you can start to see it really start to get bad up here this whole side is bad and you can see in the trees 
Now it was windy, but this isn't wind blur. I mean, or motion blur. This is something's up with the lens and it's foggy, it's not sharp. I don't really know what's going on. So now to show you the 15 millimeter. Here we are, 15 millimeter. This is at 2.5, so this is wide open. And I will say, Irix, I'm sorry. The lens isn't as bad as I was making it out to be. But this is what I did notice is that, so if I wanna move this around, there's a lot of these chromatic aberrations. There's a lot of coma here, uh, especially on the brightest stars. And, but the overall sharpness and the shape of the star isn't bad, but I mean, lots of coma. The Rokinon, in my opinion, wasn't nearly as bad. And you start getting to the corners. Uh, it could, this could be a little bit of wind and or motion blur as well. Uh, but at the same time, or like from me hitting the shutter and not using a two second release, I don't remember if I did or not, but you, I normally don't. I'm pretty bad about that. But obviously there's some stigmatisms here too. Um, that's why the stars are kind of elongated this way. So not terrible considering this is wide open, um, but obviously I would like this better if possible. Keep in mind of this 2.5 number for when we go to the uh, Sigma 14 millimeter. So we're gonna go to the other corner. Same thing, we have those long stigmatisms as well as the chromatic aberrations. So yeah, so this is the 15. Now at 2.5, this is the 15 uh, at 2.8. So I stopped down just a little bit to see not that much difference. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the compare mode. Now I can't zoom in as much as I'd like to on this one, but I'm gonna do as close as I can. We're gonna go over here and I'm gonna go to 100%. Make them look a little bit closer at least. Um, so on the right, I have, uh, I think this is the 2.4 and on the left I have 2.8. So virtually no difference so I want the 2.5 to be here and I want the f this is now 4 on the left get these lined up okay so now this is at f4 look how nice this looks pretty good and up in the corners now you can see right here that there's definitely some misshapen stars this is generally if i had to guess this is probably because of just the shape of the lens being so wide uh, but overall especially the center sharpness really really nice i'm pleasantly surprised but the thing is this is f4 in my opinion way too dark for any really any sort of night photography that is single shot uh, you really want to be as wide open as you can in the best performance you can but at f4, if you have a star tracker, this is a phenomenal lens for only 380 bucks. So we're gonna move on. I'm gonna go back to this regular mode. And this is f4 uh, showing you the full photo here. Now I wanna show you the Sigma 14 1.8. So this is a shot here. Keep in mind, this is f2. So this is pretty wide open. Um, this is 20 seconds. I normally shoot 20 seconds. But I just, after zooming in, I, I noticed uh, that it looks like there's trailing at 20 seconds. So 15 seconds would be a little smarter. So this is uh, 20 seconds at f2. You can see with the Sigma, um, th there's not a whole lot of vignetting. Let me go back and show you the vignetting um, at 2.5 on, on the Irix. There's a lot of vignetting just like the Rokinon, there's a lot of vignetting. So we're gonna jump to F4. It's it's a lot better. The vignetting is a lot better, but there still is some there. So back to the Sigma. Like that's the same amount of vignetting as the F4. And this is at F2. So this is really, really good. If I check that box, this gets nice and bright. Um, my settings were f2 20 seconds so technically if my settings would be the same as the other one it would be approximately about here 
so this would be the same um, but let's look at these stars you can tell how sharp they are but at the same time at f2 there's a lot of stigmatisms you, these little wings these are the stigmatisms let's zoom in a little bit more so that's why I have always shot this uh, lens at let's show you this picture now either f 2.8 or 2.5 so and let me zoom in here and really show you why I'm gonna go to the center here at 15 seconds center sharpness is really good there is a little bit of star stretch again just because the lens is so huge and it's so warped um, it's almost to be expected from these big wide-angle lenses uh, and then we go to the corners they look a little soft but it, it's probably just because of the noise uh, but other than that, the shape is really good. Uh, there's really not a whole lot of aberrations or coma going on. Um, a little bit of coma, but not too much. Keep in mind, this is at 2.8. Uh, I do have more going on in the right-hand corner. Um, definitely a lot more coma, a little bit more ab stigmatisms, aberrations. Um, but that is at F2. So here I'm going to show you the F4 tracked. And this is a three minute tract exposure ISO 2000 at F4. These are my corners. They look much better, a little bit much sharper. So from that 2.8 to the F4, let's compare. You can definitely see how going from F2.8 to F4 did sharpen it up quite a good bit. But at the same time, um, it's a marginal difference. And as I mentioned before, F4 is very dark for night photography. If I, I would be normally shooting at ISO 12,800 at F4, maybe 20 seconds. Um, with today's noise reduction technology, it's really not that big of a deal. But, you know, uh, if you have a star tracker, if you're really interested in night photography, definitely recommend getting one uh, and learning Photoshop because uh, F4 looks great. So here's what I really wanted to show you guys, and this was my main concern about the Irix lens specifically. The big stars, the big bright stars, especially in winter, you get the win winter circle and you get constellations like Orion. So let me show you these. Okay. I'm going to go to 300%. That's really bad. Like, in my opinion, unacceptable. Wide open. 2.5 at 15 seconds there's some obvious star trailing here it's in the center of the frame so this should not be star trails at all 15 seconds 15 millimeter this should be perfect um so i'm gonna go to the next photo because i stopped it down a little bit this is now at f4 15 seconds with a 15 millimeter irix i just i'm gonna be repeating that a lot because i want to make sure that you guys are following me um, same thing I stopped it down it did not it fixed the chromatic aberrations so let's kind of do the compare so here we are with the chromatic aberrations you can see that those chromatic aberrations are virtually fixed by f4 which is good if you have a star tracker so now so here we go this is 10 seconds 15 millimeter f4 I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to 300% on this guy so at 10 seconds, you can see that that's a pretty round star for Orion. That looks pretty good. So, but 10 seconds is just, I should at least be able to do 15 on a 15 millimeter. It doesn't make sense that I have to shoot 10 seconds. And what's even weirder is later on in the, this same night, I, uh, I was shooting 15 seconds and I wasn't getting this trailing effect. So I can't explain that. Let's go look at the corners. Got a big bright star here. Um, sharpness looks good. A little soft, but that's okay. Uh, we got a little bit of stigmatisms going on, but otherwise, not too bad. Same thing, F4, a little bit, not quite circles, but at. Let me move me again. You know, this is at 2.5 making sure I got the right picture up here shoot 2.4 don't look bad in the corners not at all 2.5 sorry but at widest it does not look bad especially compared 
to the 14 millimeter um, Rokinon that I have. So this doesn't look all that bad. Okay. Now I did some tracking to show you guys. So this is the 15 millimeter uh, 2.5 wide open 10 seconds and uh, ISO 12,800 just to gather enough light and some just little minor edits. Um, let's zoom in. Again, aberrations bad. Um, coma in the corners, stigmatisms in the corners. But to me, I don't notice that trailing anymore. We are at 10 seconds, so that's good. Now, this is the uh, 15 millimeter at 15 seconds at 2.8. So I stopped down just a little bit. I'm not noticing the trailing at 15 seconds like I was in the Orion picture. I can't explain why. That's just very weird. Um, but we're still dealing with those aberrations in the center frame. But the corners, a little bit of stigmatisms. I'm just repeating myself at this point. Now comparing that to the 14. Oh, sorry. This is the tracked shot. So uh, of the 15 millimeter. Now we're at F4. At 1600, this this looks really good. A little bit of star stretch, not terrible. All the way to the corners. Corners have star stretch. That's normal. But honestly, it's not too bad. You get some stigmatisms way in the corners. Not bad at all. Okay, here's the 14 millimeter. Almost immediately, even looking at it at full size, you can see that, like, I'm going to put a little gradient mask on here just so I can give you, like, a hard line to see. Above the red, right above that red, is where the cutoff is of where the issues start with that lens. But for some reason, this lens just is utter trash. I did want to show you this as well, the 14 millimeter tracked. Um, it looks better up here. So I can't really explain why this looks so much worse on this picture than it does on this one. But um, again, this is the 14 millimeter tracked. Here is the 15 millimeter uh, night and day difference in terms of quality. Uh, by far, the IRX surpasses my 14 millimeter when tracked. So. It's tough. <laughs> when I am thinking of this, the reason I'm buying this lens is I really want it for Aurora photography. So Aurora photography, especially when things are going crazy and the pillars are going crazy, you want very short shutter speeds. I mean, I'm talking one, two, three, four seconds. I'm dealing with 15 to 20 seconds here. That's a lot more light. This Irix is not going to cut it for me because it's so good at F4. It needs to be so good at 2.8 or... Ideally, I had like a faster lens um, and I might break and just repair the 14 Sigma. I wanted to show you this as well, just in terms of the sharpness that I would like is I have a 28 millimeter uh, Sigma lens and it is impeccable sharpness. This is a 10 shot panorama that I did. Um, if we zoom in here and let it render. I mean, sharpness is, 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 is amazing. Like it's my favorite lens by far. I can use it at F2 and it looks fantastic. Here is uh, a shot at F2. Super sharp, great stars. Uh, this is tracked by the way, 60 seconds. And this is at 2.8, but between 2.8 and the corners, I mean, almost, almost perfect. Literally almost perfect. A little bit of chromatic aberration there. Not too bad, but that's easily fixable. Um, but I can use this thing at F2 and it is it is just amazing. And here is a single shot. Uh, this is of the 28 millimeter. Uh, it's very dark, but whatever. I didn't edit this. So here it is. I mean, center sharpness is good. I think there is a little bit of motion blur because I clicked the shutter and when I hit that shutter, it started and then it rose back up from that 
little thing and that's why it's kind of drooping like that I honestly think that's my fault um but I mean it is it's this lens is my favorite lens and I use it for literally everything I'll do mosaics I'll do panoramas this is my go-to lens for pretty much everything when I'm not doing like super wide field stuff uh, but yeah in terms of my opinion on the irix 15 millimeter 2.4 I'm disappointed because I have heard such great things about this lens being wide open and I am not, I'm probably not going to keep this lens uh, because I'm looking for something that is usable uh, at a very low aperture, f2, 2.8, 2.4, you know, as low as I can be in it. Oh, just hit the table. <laughs> and unfortunately, there's just not much on the market. The Sigma 18 or ugh, the Sigma 14 1.8 is the go to lens. And now this is for Canon EF. And there are a lot of lenses out there for that. Um, <laughs> if you have if you have Sony, you have a lot more options, uh, especially Sony mirrorless. But, uh, you know, it is what it is and I'll take what I can get. So this is my review for the Irix 15 millimeter 2.4 lens. It is available for about three hundred and eighty dollars. And in my opinion, uh, if you're looking for a good budget lens, this isn't the worst option, but I actually think the Rokinon 14 millimeter 2.8 is actually uh, better than this lens. So that's just my opinion. I guess that's if you get a good copy. Uh, and that is the manual focus lens, which is uh, cheaper. And one of the drawbacks of this lens, the Irix, is that it's manual focus only. And since I do a lot of video, I'm doing YouTube a lot more, uh, having autofocus is really important, and I didn't think of that until after I purchased it to kind of test it out. So I definitely will be sending this lens back. But thank you guys so much for watching, and the rest of the video is going to be the time lapse and uh, the photos of the meteor shower. Thank you guys so much. Bye.